We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That, that among, among these, these are life, life liberty, liberty, and, and the, the pursuit, pursuit of, of happiness. happiness. American Declaration of Independence, 1776. Thomas Jefferson. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. United States Constitution, 1787. These bold commands for freedom and protected liberties were not inclusive, however. As early as 1664 in colonial Maryland, blackness was tied to slavery by law. The colonial government declared, all Negroes or other slaves shall be slaves for life. Welcome to Marietta House Museum. Nestled today on 25 acres in Prince George's County, Maryland. Marietta was a 700-acre tobacco plantation and family home of U.S. Supreme Court Associate Justice Gabriel Duval and his wife, Jane Duval. Forty African-American men, women, and children also lived and worked on the property. These families were enslaved by the Duvals, and maintain the two and a half story federal style mansion, the tobacco and corn fields, and horse stables. Then in 1832, when Gabriel Duvall's only child Edmund and daughter-in-law died, three of their four children were sent to live at Marietta. The grandchildren came with at least eight enslaved men, women, and children who were sent to live and labor at Marietta, including Serena, Rachel, Jim, Edward, Carrie, Seneca, John, and Henry. The slave quarter and outbuildings stood behind Marietta House, where multiple generations of enslaved families and individuals lived and labored, including the Jackson, Duckett, and Butler families. For over a century and a half, on nearly 700 acres, the lands comprising Marietta witnessed the enslavement of hundreds of Africans and African Americans. Here at Marietta House Museum, you will hear stories about historical, though long silenced, enslaved and free black Americans. Today, we can learn from their struggles and fraught existence, unfulfilled hopes for protected citizenship, and the slave codes and discrimination that obstructed their roads to personhood. We can begin to learn how enslaved people survived and persevered despite the injuries of racism that have been embedded in American society for hundreds of years. Being an American citizen should entitle one to civil and political rights and protections by law. The words in the United States Constitution, Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence promise American citizens liberty. These founding documents that frame our 250-year-old democracy were written by men who worked with and admired Justice Gabriel Duval. His close friends, President Thomas Jefferson and President James Madison, authored those documents. These men shared a love for the law and philosophy and claimed an enlightened understanding of freedom. Yet they denied people of African ancestry the ability to realize these freedoms. At the same time, black abolitionists by the pen name Vox Africanorum called out the nascent paradox of liberty in the Maryland Gazette. Though our bodies differ in color from yours, yet our souls are similar in a desire for freedom. Disparity in color, we conceive, can never consume a disparity in rights. Circa 1783. 
Gabriel Duvall began his career as a lawyer in Annapolis, Maryland, where he defended and won over 120 freedom petitions, winning freedom for hundreds of black men, women, and children. He became chief judge of the Maryland General Court. He entered politics serving in the Maryland State Legislature. As an elector for Thomas Jefferson, Duvall was a Jeffersonian Democratic Republican touting local and individual freedom, believing slavery would someday die out, while at the same time enslaving over 100 people during his lifetime, primarily at Marietta. Building upon his early reputation as a good lawyer, Duval entered politics and served in the U.S. House of Representatives. Jefferson appointed Duval to serve as the first U.S. Comptroller and President Madison appointed Duval to the U.S. Supreme Court. Enslaved people used different ways to be freed. This included purchasing their freedom or the freedom of a loved one, receiving manumission through an enslaver's last will and testament and through the court system, or as last resort, running away from their enslavers. Some enslaved people could pursue freedom through filing freedom petitions, a legal process available to the enslaved to sue their enslavers for their freedom in court. Some freedom petitions made it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. One such case was filed by attorney Francis Scott Key, best known for writing The Star Spangled Banner. But he was primarily an attorney Key represented Priscilla and Minna Queen of Prince George's County. Chief Justice John Marshall opined to deny the Queens their freedom. Gabriel Duvall, who a decade earlier had defended 22 Queen family members in freedom suits, issued a strongly worded dissent from his seat on the U.S. Supreme Court bench, one of his only opinions in nearly 25 years on the Supreme Court. He wrote, it will be universally admitted that the right to freedom is more important than the right of property. Despite his active involvement in representing enslaved people seeking freedom and his dissent in the Queen's Supreme Court case, Duvall stood firm on his decision to enslave people for his plantation and household. In 1805, Thomas and Sarah Butler, with their infant daughter, Sally, were sold to Gabriel Duvall. He was buying several enslaved people that year to work at Marietta. The Butlers had already lost two older daughters, Lydia and Jane, who had been sold to another slaveholder. Thomas and Sarah Butler were held by Duvall for the next 26 years. The Butlers' family grew while at Marietta. By the 1820s, three generations were enslaved there. In 1828, they filed a freedom petition in D.C. court on behalf of their family. Duval fought hard to maintain ownership of the Butlers. However, in 1831, the Butlers won their freedom. For themselves, their children, Rezin, Airy, Matilda, and Sally, and for their grandchildren, Liddy and Eliza Butler. The paradox of liberty in America was protected by national and state laws and local slave codes that denied enslaved and free people of color their full citizenship and civil rights, including rights to vote, travel, assemble, serve as a witness, and access to an unbiased jury. Since Maryland's early colonial days, liberty for black people invariably meant something less than what it meant for free white people. Even after achieving freedom by self-emancipation, by purchase, running away, deed, or by an enslaver's last will and testament, theirs was an unfreedom fraught with danger and disappointment. Even with the landmark abolition of slavery in 1865, with the ratification of the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution, black Americans' citizenship has been continuously challenged 
and threatened by violence, humiliation, and antagonism. Marietta House Museum of Prince George's County Parks and Recreation invites you to explore the hallowed grounds and buildings to learn more about the people who lived here, to walk through the spaces and see the vistas that were the backdrop of their enslavement in hopes of offering you a glimpse of the challenges these individuals faced, to attempt to create and sustain families, livelihoods, security, citizenship, and personhood. American citizenship captures the enduring idea that this country only works when we accept certain obligations to one another and to future generations. Barack Obama.